Who? Hey, there you are. Hi there. Oh, wait a second. I can't, you can't see me. I can't, no. Okay, okay wait a second. I got it. I think. Yeah. Hi. Hey, hi. Nothing You're on a the right. Okay. So, uh, it's recording, so that's a good thing. I can send that to uh, Rodney afterwards. Wonderful. Yeah. Is there a waiting room? The, uh, people are in a waiting room. at meet. I meet. I meet. Okay. All right. Looks like uh, we're getting started here. Oh. oh, okay. Uh, so we have six participants. Kathleen, hi. Can you hi. hear me? Hi. Rodney? Hi. I said hello. hello to you. Hey, there you are, Exor. Hey, how you doing? All right. Uh, meet Jill. Jill is on, I think. Yeah. Michael is on, yeah. All right. So they both surely. Okay, for those of you, oh, there you are. <laughs> for those of you, uh, you can, you know, you can turn on your videos. I, 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 I can see uh, three people here. Let me see. There you go, Michael. Hi. Hello. Hi. Kathleen. Hi. Rodney. Hello there. And Jill. Oh, very dark. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is. I don't know why it's not. Uh... You might want to turn on the lights in your room. Oh, uh, there we go. There we go. Much better. Yeah. Okay, I think that we have eight. Right. Let's see here. Um, uh, yep, yeah, all of them. Yeah. Okay. So as you already know, uh, welcome. As you know, uh, some of the participants, um, some, let me see here, I think I got it. Oh, yeah, some, some people won't be participating. Um, Heather Sanchez, for personal reasons, could not participate. And as you already know, uh, Abdallah cannot participate because um, his child is under treatment. And, um, I think that Elroy um, won't be able to participate either. Anyway, uh, but we have a pretty big crowd here. We have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight all together. That should suffice. I should uh, tell you that the um, meeting is being recorded and I will be sending the recording to Rodney who is in charge of taking notes and he will use that um, for the purposes of developing the report that will be submitted to the committee um, later on in the year. You got a copy of my report from last year. Um, so, um, you know, I guess um, we need to start with uh, introductions. So I guess I go first. Um, my name is JP Reed. Uh, I'm an associate professor of sociology Philosophy and Africana Studies at Southern Illinois University. And uh, this is my um, last um, time as a chair of the committee. Uh, uh, Rodney, of course, will be taking over uh, soon uh, after I'm done. <laughs> um, so that's it. Go ahead. <clears throat> Anyone? Uh, Hector Delgado, executive uh, officer. Uh, uh, retired as a professor. Michelle Kuntz, administrative officer and meeting manager. Michael Johnston, uh, I'm an assistant professor at William Penn University, teaching sociology at courses, and um, this is this is my first time being here. Welcome. You're, he's a he's a brand new brand new member. Kathleen, I need you to uh, have your. There we go. Yeah, go ahead. You're, yep. She's on mute. Yeah, you're on mute. Oh, can you hear me now? Oh. Yep. Yeah. 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 
Hi, I'm Kathy Asbury. How are you? This is my last year on this committee, and I love this committee, so I'm sorry to see it go. Me go. All right. <laughs> Uh, Jill Brantley. Uh, I uh, am an adjunct professor at the George Washington University. This is my second year on the uh, on the committee. Uh, everyone, uh, this is Yi Ying Shen. I'm an associate professor of sociology at Norfolk State University in Virginia. This is my first time to attend this meeting. I missed uh, the last year's committee meeting in New York. Okay, welcome everyone. So uh, basically, um, we are supposed to discuss the agenda, I mean review, and then of course discuss and adopt the agenda. Um, or wait, review and then adopt the agenda. I think. <laughs> I think that that's the way it goes. And then after that, we can discuss. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, is everyone on board for discussing, developing uh, action items for the membership shortfall? Can I get your votes? I, I get my, I, I get thumbs, thumbs up. Everyone okay with agenda? Yeah? Yes. Okay. Yes. I just, Jean-Pierre, I just want to be clear on Go ahead. Uh, that, that what we'll be that what we have there is uh, with uh, adopting the agenda is also our first real agenda item, right? And probably our main agenda item, which is yep. to uh, yep. come up with some. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Right. Okay. Good. We're on board. Uh, unanimous uh, decision. Um, now, do we have any questions on the minutes that I sent you from last year? Um, do we? Uh, we accept them. Yes. Move to accept the uh, minutes from last year. I'll second Great. that. I'll abstain just because I was. I'll abstain because I wasn't part of it. Okay, that's fine. Looks like Irvin just stepped up. Yep, Erin. Hi. Hi. Sorry, I was late. Oh, it's okay. Um. So do we uh? Second the motion. I second it. Second it. Okay. Thank you. So, yeah, I need to get your thumbs up. Because I can't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, Hector, yes. Mm -hmm. Thumbs up for the minutes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Hector doesn't vote on the minutes, I guess. No. What you said. Oh, we, we need to review them and we need to accept them as they are. So mm -hmm. I, I, I take it that they're, that they're okay for you. Yes? Okay. Yes. All right, so report. I uh, have not, not much to report except that, of course, I, uh, Rodney um, Coates will be the new chair after we are done today. And, um, you know, we basically are faced with a rather interesting challenge uh, as a result of COVID-19. So, <clears throat> Um, that's pretty much all I have to report. Um, I, I, I didn't get any other reports, uh, except of course the reports connected to membership. So I figured that uh, I just announced uh, Rodney's uh, new chairmanship. Uh, on that note, then we need to basically um, hear what Hector and Michelle have to say about um, the things that have been going on um, this past year. Michelle, did you want to start? Oh, I can, yes. Um, okay, so earlier today, uh, based on Jill's request, I put together several reports. Um, it's a lot of information for you to review at your leisure. Uh, keep in mind that we have the Budget Finance and Audit Committee that deals with all financial matters. And the Membership and Outreach Committee, you know, who their task is, you know, to focus on uh, recruitment and retention of our members. So the email that you received from Hector and myself concerning the membership shortfall, a similar email was sent to the Membership and Outreach Committee Chair, and Dr. Foster has been working with his committee. Um, we have a Zoom meeting with the Membership and Outreach Committee on Thursday evening. So 
um, we'll be discussing that in, in greater detail. Um, I can tell you when that email initially went out, we were at um, a decline of 49% from the time that the memo was sent to the previous year. Uh, we are now at a 44% decline in membership from this time last year. And part of that is due for, for several reasons. Um, some of our members that are serving in elected or appointed capacity have not renewed their membership for 2020. So uh, Heather Dillaway, who is the Budget Finance and Audit Committee Chair, um, she sent out a um, memo to those individuals. And when it went out, it went to a total of 65 people. So that includes anyone that's elected, appointed, <laughs> Um, and if you are serving within social problems on any capacity, whether you're an associate editor or an advisory editor or a student advisory editor. editor. And so it was just a plea from her for these individuals to renew their membership. And so that went to 65 people and um, unfortunately only eight people responded and renewed their membership. So in addition to that, then Dr. Foster put together a memo that went to 20, um, 2018 and 2019 members encouraging them to renew. So we currently, as of this morning, we have 1,076 20, 20 plus members. And at the same time last year, it was at 1546. So we've got a decline of about 470 members. Um, anyone who joins after August the 2nd, what we will be sending um, next week is an announcement to those that have started the membership renewal process, like you can either to renew or join, and for whatever reason you stop, so it shows a pending balance, um, our office will be sending a memo to those individuals encouraging them to go ahead and renew or join. Now, after August the 2nd, anyone who joins or renews will be for 2021. And so what that means from a revenue standpoint is that rev any renewals that come in between now and August 2nd will count toward the current year. After August 2nd, it will go into a prepaid membership category. So um, the Budget Finance and Audit Committee has projected um, a large deficit for not only 2020, but 2021. And that committee will be meeting twice uh, and the first meeting is next Friday, and we'll be re revising the 2020 budget, which um, the BFA committee held a virtual meeting in May. And so we spent seven hours in a Zoom meeting going over all the various components for 2021, as well as for revisions to the 2020 budget. So the committee has already spent a great deal of time. Our next two meetings are just for a few hours and they will be devoted to, you know, just an update on where things stand. Um, I just received the June financial statements from our investments. And so they have improved some, you know, um, prior to, you know, the drastic hit due to COVID-19. So, uh, but all of that, taken into consideration, uh, the BFA feels that we will have an actual realized deficit for 2020. Um, and, and part of that is due to just the cancellation of the annual meeting. Some of our members only renew or join when their paper is on the program. And, and then others, you know, due to the financial hardships due to COVID-19, you know, just have not renewed. So, that's where we stand um, with membership. And then um, just for an item of uh, clarification is our current contract with the University of Tennessee expires on December 31st of 2021. 
And so next spring, there will be either a physical or Zoom meeting um, to conduct a site visit with certain officials uh, at the University of Tennessee. And it's a subcommittee and it consists of the treasurer who, who is Dr. Susan Carlson. It will be um, Rodney as chair of the committee and then one other committee member with a term for um, 2020 to 2021 or greater um, needs to also be a part of this site visit. So I guess, you know, at some point during the meeting today, um, you know, I need to know who that member will be. And then I will work with, you know, those individuals. Um, I can tell you with the University of Tennessee um, Department of Sociology and our project director is Dr. John Scheffner and the SSSP has had a contract with UT since 1990. So it's a long-term relationship. It's been a, a very uh, beneficial relationship to SSSP because the society does not pay um, indirect costs. And, but one thing that has occurred that has not been resolved is um, SSSP provides, we call it departmental compensation to the Department of Sociology, and it, it's more of an a, a bureaucracy, um, the way th accounts are handled at the University of Tennessee, but the 2019 department compensation amount has not been invoiced, and so um, following this meeting today, Hector and I are going to talk because Dr. Scheffner has reached out um, and you know we need to have a conversation of, of how to move forward. Um, my hope is that we can keep the current contract since it's only for an additional year intact um, and not have to make any changes, but uh, we've got to figure out a way that that departmental compensation money can get to the department. Right now, um, it, it up until Last year, it's never been an issue, but apparently there's some new um, accounting teams in place. And so the department head, as well as um, those in sponsored accounts have been convening. I have not been a part of that conversation. It's apparently has been going on for months. And so now Dr. Scheffner is wanting to have a conversation with Hector and I and see if we can't somehow come up to a resolution. So those are the sort of the three items that I have, um, you know, right now, um, as we've encouraged all of our 23 divisions to hold a virtual business meeting. Um, you know, so some of those have already been planned. They have until July 31st to do so. And one thing new that we are adding, the board of directors have been meeting via Zoom multiple times since throughout this whole COVID, trying first to um, see if, if and how we could continue with the 2020 annual meeting. And when it became obvious that we needed to cancel, you know, we, there was a clause in our hotel contract that if ASA canceled, we could cancel without penalty. And so that's what we were waiting for was when it became obvious that, you know, it was just um, would not be an option for our members, um, you know, to travel. Then when ASA made that announcement, we immediately reached out to our hotel contact and was able to get the contract canceled. The one thing we haven't been able to get back is our $9,500 deposit. And so we are working with um, Marissa Crane with Helms Briscoe. And so I've reached out um, and she's reached out. And so now we are, we're going up to the general manager. You know, we really want to avoid having to do a legal dispute over $9,500. Um, but that money should rightfully return. And it's stated in our contract. It's very specific that if ASA cancels, then all deposits will be returned to the society. What's the so, holdup? Pardon me? What's the holdup? 
They just won't write the check? I mean, they have not released the funds, and apparently it's up to the hotel owners. I mean, hotels, the whole tourism industry have been hit incredibly oh, hard. Yeah. And so, you know, they, they just, the revenue streams. Um, so, so they're holding um, out money for I would, the, uh, the hands on, I guess. Yeah. I, I would suggest that um, a, a letter from a lawyer um, uh, would, would make that money available much quicker. Uh, and typically a lawyer will, will write a letter for a couple hundred dollars. It'll cost us a couple hundred dollars and we'll get $9,500 back, um, uh, period. We've got a contract, they're in breach of the contract. Uh, we need to handle this in a business way. Agreed. When we uh, reached out to Marissa Hills Briscoe, we, we indicated to her that we wanted to avoid the, uh, you know, having to go the legal route, but it, it seems, I, I agree with Rodney, right, that it seems that we might be headed that way. I believe in one of her emails, she indicated that they said that, that they have a queue, I believe, right, uh, Michelle, the, the hotel has a queue and that we're on the queue, but uh, we may want to, you know, there is a queue to move up to, to the front of it. Right. The only way we're going to do that would be, as Rodney suggests, unless Marissa gets somewhere else with the general manager. The general manager, I think she contacted him yesterday. So if we don't hear from him probably by the end of the week. Uh, then at that point, we can, uh, you know, uh, take the legal route. Might, might, might I suggest that before we actually take the legal route, we simply indicate to them that we're going to be forced to take a legal route unless we hear from them mm -hmm. within and set the date, um, um, let's say a week from now, seven days. Uh, um, that gives them an opportunity, you know, to, to make a move. And it, and, it, and it gives us an opportunity not to spend the money if we don't have to. Yeah, that, that would be the first step of the legal route to say that we we may have to resort to that. So we agree. We agree on that. So That's how good. long has this, this dispute been in place? What's that? How long has this dispute been in place? We canceled at the end of April. I wouldn't necessarily call it a dispute per se. Um, I mean, when we initially reached out, you know, it, it he did respond. Um, but since that initial response, you know, we've sent a few other inquiries and then, you know, um, we reached out to Marissa, you know, given her scope and just the prestige that comes with Helms Briscoe um, might have a stronger voice than our voice. So that's, that's where we are with that. So, um, but no, we are determined to get that money Coming back. to very quickly now, so something's going to have to get very uh, we've given them more than enough time. Yeah, uh, I mean, we're going on a three months. We're going on three months at the end of July. So yeah, no, I mean, it's it's uh, you know at the same time, it's uh, one of the things that we indicated to them earlier too. This is part of the leverage we have uh, when we canceled, and we didn't get any pushback when we canceled. Was that we were interested in next time in San Francisco and going back to their hotel. So not only will our next communication indicate that we may have to take the legal route, but also that they're also, uh, you know, our, our consideration of their hotel for our next time is, is not looking very good because it's to their advantage, right, to host us next time we're in San Francisco. So that'll be part of our communication to them as well. Do we have any questions for Michelle? Um, if you do, um, just let me know and we can take them in order. I have some questions, but I want to give everyone else an opportunity to uh, ask them. I have a question. Um, do we do we have in the contract any statements about timeline to get repaid on this? No, I'll pull up the contract now and read the clock. I mean, it, it's. Down here. There's no time frame in, you know, and we should have gotten it very quickly. And I think part of it is that, um, and it's, you know, we're, it's really their problem, but we're victims of their problem, right? Is I think that this has created havoc on their end, uh, the pandemic. 
And I think it's more that than anything, but we're the ones suffering for it. Right. So that's why we have to resolve it quickly, but it's not in the contract, you know, by a specific date. No, it just states under the performance clause, you know, if ASA cancels, we are able to cancel without penalty. And then it says, in addition, all deposit that group has provided to hotel shall be promptly returned to society. So, so it is crystal clear. Yeah, so prompt is in there. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> and I think we pushed the outer limits of prompt at this point. <laughs> so that's why we're going to expedite it. Anyone else? I'm glad it didn't say with all deliberate speed. <laughs> We learned that the hard way, didn't we? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm waiting on that one. Jill, do you have any questions? Uh, I've got yeah. some, but not not at this stage. <laughs> ah, okay. Anyone else? Yeah, let, me, uh, let me throw something in very quickly on the issue. I mean, one on the uh, the membership, and we'll be talking in more detail about that. Um, obviously, the pandemic uh, makes it very difficult to, to predict and makes our job a lot harder. In fact, I was watching a press conference earlier today about opening up the schools, and it was confusing as all hell. You had different people, right, saying different things, so uh, that didn't help uh, a great deal. Uh, so, so it's uncharted waters here that, that we have. So, but I think you know that already. As far as the uh, contract with the University of Tennessee, just so you have a little bit of background, about a few years ago, maybe two or three, Michelle, I'm sure you would know exactly what it was. We, we actually looked into going it alone. In other words, not having a relationship with the university. We did an in-depth analysis mm -hmm. of that. And our conclusion was that it really... Uh, didn't make any sense that we really should, you know, our best bet is to have a relationship with the university. Um, if not Tennessee, another institution, but, but even that, um, going to another institution was not a really good option, just so you have that in the back of your mind. Um, we did an in-depth analysis of that, and uh, it's really not a good option at all. Uh, it would be very difficult for us to go to one. Yeah, I, I remember that. I mean, you 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 got a facility. You got you would have to uh, pay rent, whatever. It would cost us even more money if yeah. we were to separate uh, to a physical facility versus having this connection. Yeah. Yeah, this uh, stuff in Asia has been an ongoing yeah, thing. What was that? I'm sorry. What was that? The stuff in Asia has been an, an ongoing thing. I mean, I've been here three years, and it's still an issue. I mean, I'm hope that the, they will extend it to 2021. Hopefully, I mean, it's only it's only one year. Well, our contract is through December 31st of 2021. That is signed. That's not an issue. That's not an issue. That's not an issue. Yeah, no, I meant I meant the um, the the compensation to the to the department. Is that what you meant? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We have a relationship with them through the end of 2021, and uh, we we anticipate we expect to then to renew that for an additional five years. Um, if they if they said to us that they didn't want to do it, that would surprise us. But we don't have any reason to think that we're not going to continue that relationship. Uh, the specifics of that relationship may change. For example, one of the things we've been trying to do and haven't been successful is to uh, get a, another, though the pandemic you know, creates a whole different issue and lower membership, but at one point we were trying to get another staff member and instead of having the GRA, the graduate student, so we were gonna provide them with money so a graduate student can do a teaching assistantship or a graduate, but not to work for us, right, as, as they do now, uh, to hire somebody full-time or part-time a professional to do that work. They weren't open to that. So we may be re revisiting that, but, uh, but, but that can, but that's not something that we should probably, you know, do right now. There's too that's many right. people for that. I think I would, I do have a question. That is, I just want to be a little clearer. Is the, is the problem that within the University of Tennessee, there are fights over who's going to sort of get some of the money or how it's going to be 
it, it credited it on their books? No, it, it's basically just um, the Department of Sociology is the intended recipient. Right. It's just the way in which that money has been routed to the department is now under uh, question and sponsored how, projects. How has, it, how has it been routed? Do you just write them a check or? Uh, we're invoiced. We receive monthly invoices from the University of Tennessee and that covers, you know, because those in, in the administrative office are employed by the University of Tennessee. Triple SP does not have any employees. So our monthly invoices consist of salary, fringe benefits, you know, limited amount of postage. And then um, the project director receives a stipend and fringe benefits as well as the department compensation. So that those are really the only budgeted items um, that go through the University of Tennessee. Okay. When you say route, I think I'm still not quite understanding uh, routed. <laughs> it's internal through the department. I'm not involved in any of those. Okay. I see. So that is between sponsored projects, the dean's office, and uh, okay. the administrative support staff in the Department of Sociology under the leadership of Dr. John Scheffner, okay. who is department head, and he will be stepping down on August 1st, and Dr. Stephanie Bohan is the incoming department head. Um, Dr. Bohan was the executive officer for the Southern Sociological oh, Society. Oh, okay, so we have a, a potentially a, a friend coming in. Who, yes, yes, yeah, she, right, you know, right. I have a good relationship with Stephanie, um, okay. but Dr. Scheffner will remain the project director under the current contract, mm -hmm. and so the new contract, when that is negotiated, then we will address that instead of it naming a, a person, it will just name department head. So if there is change up in, Good. in that category within the context of the contract term, you know, it, it will just go to the next department head. Okay, makes sense. Yeah. I have some questions um, okay. connected to the points that you elaborated on. Okay, so I am I'm curious about the appointed and elected um, officials um, and the relationship to membership. Uh, to be an appointed or elected official, you have to have membership, no? Um, they do when they are voted in the position, or but then if they don't renew during their term, you know, they still remain a member and we, you know, send reminders encouraging those individuals to renew. Um, so, you know, I have a list of, you know, who those individuals are and, you know, I mean, they, they serve in multiple capacities. Right. Okay. But, but, but I guess in the way the statute is right now, they can basically be members without being, being members of community without being members of the society. Maybe this is something that perhaps can be Technically, no. fixed, no? Technically, they're not supposed to be in. So we have the option of just continuing to try to get them, right, right. to join, or just telling them, okay, you're out, and then having to replace them. And right. the route we've been taking now is to trying to get them to, to renew their membership. Right. I mean, th that's what I wanted to get clarity on. I mean, that mm -hmm. technically, yes, they should be members of the society if they are appointed or elected officials. But apparently, it's somewhat nebulous in terms of whether or not they should be compelled to, 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 to rejoin the society. Um, but, so I was thinking that, so I mean, at one point, you might need to threaten them. <laughs> with like, okay, you know, you're gonna lose this appointed uh, position or elected position if you don't become a member, right? Right, and it's in our bylaws. Our bylaws are very, very clear. And, you know, um, we communicate that to these individuals and, you know, when, you know, for example, um, right now the Committee on Committees is working on the committee appointments for 2020 and 2021. And what 
the administrative office did when we sent the list of those that are willing to serve on various committees, we only included 2020 and greater. Again, so that takes away any that anyone contacted that isn't a current member and agreed to serve on a committee. Now, what that doesn't do is the president elect can appoint chairs and chair elects to certain committees. And, you know, when someone is listed in that capacity, I indicate that they're not a current member you know, we communicate with them and then, you know, I'll just use permanent organization for an example. It's a three-year term. So the person would be a current member when they accepted the appointment, but that doesn't, you know, for some people they don't renew. And that's true, you know, like membership and outreach, you know, a lot of our committees are three-year appointments. And even if it is a one-year appointment, you would still need to renew your membership during that term. So that's just you know, where we are. This is not a new, I mean, we've been dealing with this, you know, for a very, very long time, um, you know. Yeah, but, but under the current circumstances, you know, maybe they need to be reminded that we are lacking funds and one of the ways in which we get funds is through membership, no? Correct, and that, I mean, that's why the letter came from uh, Dr. Dillaway, who is the Budget Finance and Audit Committee Chair. And I mean, it, it's, specifically talked about the significant deficit uh, that was projecting and, you know, explains, you know, that our revenue streams come from membership dues, annual meeting revenue, and then the journal. Those are our steady streams. And then we also receive revenue from uh, contributions and our investments. Those are our only revenue streams. I, I so, would... I would like to uh, suggest that we're not in a normal time right now uh, and that some individuals may actually be undergoing some economic uncertainty in their lives. Uh, and and uh, we're, if we're dealing with long-term members, uh, I would not like for us to lose someone permanently uh, by taking a hard stand. Uh, and if there's any way, you know, that we can have leniency, I think we should, particularly given this moment we're in right now, because this is not normal. Yeah, I mean, I think that the issue is how long, right? How long of a leniency? Um, um, but this brings me to the next question. How large of a deficit? I see Kathleen's hand. Kathy had her hand up. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry. Uh, on mute. You're muted. Am I, am I okay? Yeah. Good. Sorry. Um, if if we're going into a three-year commitment to the, couldn't we ask people then to go ahead and renew ahead of time? Not three yeah. years. Oh, oh, yeah. no, that's... Why not? That's a lot it's of a lot money. Of money for I'm some actually, people. It's that's a, a lot of money. A lot of money for some asking. People. Some of you have some money. I mean, I, you know, I, I, I agree with the. Uh, I I don't have a job and my unemployment just stopped, and so I I'm one of those people that might have trouble renewing. But but I'm just curious why we couldn't ask them. They might be able to do it. One, our our <laughs> our system is not set up. You know, it, it's set up for the calendar year. Okay. Um, and then because if anyone is, you're still considered a current member, according to the bylaws, you can still receive communications from us and you can still vote um, for six months. Now you will not receive social problems. Um, and then so... I just yeah. <laughs> By the way, some organizations have created life memberships, we um, have, yeah. um, which is a additional stream of money. Uh, 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 you figure, I'm sorry, Coates is, is 90 years old. He's not going to live for about four <laughs> or five more years, okay? Um, <laughs> but if you get him to uh, get a life membership that will cover like six years, uh, and he's dead, you know, you got two free years out of him, okay? Uh, but no, life membership is something that, that that I think we could consider as an additional uh, stream of money, particularly where we're at right now. Well, I mean, so you do have that. Just I wanted to say that. Go ahead. We have life membership. Oh, we do? 
Uh, those are sustaining members, right? Sustaining members. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sustaining yeah. members, yeah. Plus but sustaining members. Yeah. We, we could, we could potentially, uh, you know, give them the option of two years. Some organizations ask for membership for one or two years, and sometimes <laughs> even three years. So we could potentially, you know, provide that as an option so that, you know, we can get the money up front that way. For those of for those of us who want to basically be members, you know, uh, for a long time to come. Like if I were to get a three-year membership offer or two-year membership membership offer, uh, knowing that I want to stay in this conference venue, I I, I will pay for it uh, up front. Uh, Are you saying with a discount for three years? There's I, I can't recall if there's a discount, but there's a little bit of a discount. But the thing is, is that you end up basically getting a chunk, a chunk. You know, and, 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 and this is, um, I belong to some organizations that, you know, their focus is on religion. And I, I do not always necessarily go that option, two years, uh, but I would certainly go for two years or three years for triple SP. That, you know, that's, I, I would do that. Some organizations have a thing, buy, buy four, get one free. <laughs> um, um, you know, something like that, uh, that again, uh, and, and a lot of people don't really do it, but it, it will provide a stream of money right now. Okay. Well, my guess is, is that the same people who are not, are delaying this year have always been delaying, right? They always don't pay until we are kind of asked them a lot of times, is that the case? Are they pretty much the same people? There's a lot of names that I see regularly. Yes. Okay. 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 So they're they're usually late to everything in in money wise. Okay. Okay. I would like to propose that maybe okay. it could be okay. an action item. Uh, uh, you know, like to propose to the board that maybe we should have some form of a, as you know, Rodney basically was suggesting, uh, membership sale. You know, get three, get one free, or get four and get one free. But those people that the that. budget <laughs> finance and audit committee was tasked with last year was buy one division membership and get one free right. and so that came out of the council of division chair oh. and when the budget finance and audit committee met in may um you know that is something that will be taken to the board you know and the board will you know, vote to approve. And what the hope was is that we can use that in our promotional efforts for 2021. Okay. You know, and, and those are an additional $10. Uh, you get one free division with your regular membership and students receive two free divisions. And so that revenue stream, which, you know, can get it high as like $10,000, then divisions have the opportunity to apply for that money for a division sponsored project. And so what we're hoping to do is, you know, kind of use that as, um, you know, maybe enticing some members, not only to renew, but also to try other divisions, because with the decline in membership, you know, we are seeing a huge decline in division membership. Exactly. I mean, we just added the, you know, gender division and, and that was, a very um, successful division. I mean, it's, it, I believe has like 114, 2020 members. Mm -hmm. um, if, so. we, if we look at membership by demographics on the last pages on the survey, uh, some very interesting things come up. Uh, we are predominantly white, okay? About 70% of the membership are white. Um, uh, we're not getting black, we're not getting Hispanic, we're not getting uh, 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 other groups, okay? In the numbers I think we should have. We're also bifurcated in terms of age. We have very old members and we have very young members, okay? Uh, and we're miss missing uh, significantly those mid-career uh, 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 people that 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 would be more long terms, okay? So, so I think if we, if we, if we look at those surveys, 
uh, and start asking a different set of questions, okay? For example, why don't we have uh, as much diversity in, 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 in our uh, uh, organization as we should, okay? Why is it still predominantly white, okay? Uh, uh, does this reflect uh, 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 sociologists or does this reflect ourselves? Lastly, uh, 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 why are we so concentrated in universities when we got a whole bunch of sociologists that do not work at universities that are in academics? Those are also very low, okay? And the question for us need to be asked is, why aren't we, why aren't we seen as a viable, uh, valuable organization for those kinds of individuals, okay? Both in terms of diverse members, but also those that are not called in uh, academia, but also those that are in their mid-career, okay? From uh, uh, graduate school up to approximately uh, almost, you know, mid, uh, uh, late, latter part of their careers, okay? Lastly, uh, in terms of finances, uh, uh, adjunct professors and those in BAPS and so forth and so on, uh, uh, this represents a severe hardship for them, okay? And we might want to consider doing Zoom uh, as we move forward, uh, virtual conferences just to tap into uh, membership individuals that don't have the funds to attend a, a regular meeting. Uh, San Francisco is extremely high. I don't give a damn where you are. Just some ideas. Yeah. Rodney, something else that I was thinking about is uh, the longevity of uh, members, how long they've been on the board. It, it didn't seem to be that there were many lifetime members. Am I accurate in saying that? There are 51 sustaining members, and the cost of that is a one-time fee of $1,870. And uh, in terms of longevity for renewal each year, um, are we... Are, do we have a pattern of people who discontinuously mm. renew? Well, we, we, we do have on the um, membership survey for 2019, 20% of our members have been in the um, association for 21 years or more. So that's, I think that that's pretty deep. Okay. Right? Yeah. I, yep. Sorry, I, I, would you repeat that? 20% uh, of members have been members for 21 or more years. 14? 21. For, 41? 21, 21 plus. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do we, do, do we have any data from other organizations uh, that, like ours that would tell us um, if that's, you know, an, an average thing that happens in organizations like this? or if we're doing really well, I mean, it sounds good to me, but, uh, or, or, you know, we're just average, we're, so, so we know. Um, it, it, by, by the way, that also means that anytime there's fluctuations, we can count on being on the short end of the stick, okay? Uh, because we got 60, we got 59% of the membership that is not uh, continuous long term, so forth and so on. That's part of the problem. Um, I seem to be muted. I don't know why. Uh, You're not muted. You. Oh, you, you got me? Okay, yeah. sorry. I'm going <laughs> to mute sound away. Um, I, um, I'm, as I was thinking about preparing for this meeting, I work mainly in the history of sociology. And I thought, I think we would be helped, uh, and the recommendation should be, I guess, if, to the organization, if we had a, a little bit, I, mean, I think the data is available, but I don't think it's eas easily available, if we were able to get this in historical perspective. So, for instance, when Michelle first talked about the 65 people who had not who held office and hadn't renewed, I thought, well, gee, this is probably, you know, COVID. But then it became clear that this, I don't know if the number's a little higher, but that basically this is a standard pattern. And it seems to me we need, in any recommendations that we're making, we need to separate out what really we can account for by, by you know, an, an extraordinary event versus some things that are, are ongoing patterns. In the budget things that, uh, that Michelle sent, that we, were so, I mean, we really have good data there, but I, had, yeah. I only had a brief time to go over it. 
but we seem to have run what what seemed to me kind of large deficits the last couple of years. That, uh, last year specifically, we lost money in New York. Yeah, when uh, that's yeah. The, the the previous conferences going all the way back to 2011, 2010. I mean, I, I didn't look carefully at the whole data, but you know, yeah. I didn't look at what became what 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 was like. The budget was like losing money or, or, or gaining money before 2010, but 10 years of uh, solid performance, and then 2019, there is a deficit that, I mean, that raised all kinds of questions for me as to like, why was that yeah. the case? I mean, it could be because New York is super expensive, needless to say. Um, but we had a, we seem to have a deficit from 2018 also in Philadelphia. No. 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 No, no, there we, was no deficit. No deficit? Okay. In Philadelphia, no. Uh, uh, let me look it up. Uh, it was 2010 was the last deficit before this year. The years 2011 through 2018, no, uh, no. there was a surplus on the annual yeah. meeting. So On the yeah. annual meeting, but yeah. I... I, I as I, maybe I misread it, but as I was looking, it, it, I thought I saw a deficit uh, anticipated. I, I saw 2017 that we had done, uh, we had done, it seemed like very well uh, on, on all points. I, I guess I'm just thinking that um, if we could, if we could just get maybe on, on one sheet, uh, the uh, uh, just a simple statement of income expense and then, you know, uh, deficit or surplus at the end, so that we we could put this year a little bit more in, in perspective. I mean, how, you know, if, if we, because it, it seems to be addressing an, emer, an emergency situation and addressing a trend may call for, for different responses. Well, I mean, 2019, we were in, we were, we had a deficit of $13,102. And that was pretty big compared to the last one, I think. 2010. Uh, so, so if there is a pattern, the pattern must have started in 2019. I guess that's what I'm trying to say here. Because if you look at the data, basically we get credit, uh, except for 2010 and 20, 2019. Um, so maybe a new pattern was emerging in 2019. And then of course it was complicated or it was sort of like affected by the, the, the present uh, uh, epidemic. Uh, but, well, who knows? But I agree with you. I mean, it, it would be a good idea to get um, a clear vision of what the specific patterns are. And yes, this, I mean, this, this whole, all these documents are a throw of data. It's very interesting stuff here, um, which brings me to my question. Next question, unless someone else has a question on Michelle's report. No? Okay. How big is the deficit? for this year in terms of money um, and for next year what 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 is the um broadcast for next year okay. i mean i know that you have percentages for the decline in membership but as jill was in essence suggesting in her elaborations you know we are more than the conferences right we're more than you know uh, and, and you did identify five venues through which we get money right we get the conferences membership Journal, and then of course we have the other two investments, and what was the other one? Um, uh, contribution, contributions, years, right? uh, investments, Do revenue. We numbers for that, because maybe we can focus more on contributions, and then maybe we can, we can have a membership sale with leniency, of course, because Rodney has some good points there. Um, but anyway, do you have an amount for the for the deficit? I do, but keep in mind the Budget Finance and Audit Committee will be looking at this again. So this will not be the number that will be going to the board. Uh, okay. When we met on May the 29th, the projected deficit is $128,238. And that is for 2020. Wow. Ouch. Which brings me to the question, what about our reserves? What kind of funds do we have? I mean, do we have we, like money set aside? Yes, yes. Um, and much? that is one thing that our treasurer, you know, stated very clearly during the BFA meeting was, you know, we have enough to weather the storm. Ah, that's and, true. Yeah. What, are, 
what are our reserves roughly? Uh, a million. Okay. A million dollars. The, and what are our reserves? the amount on the reserves. A million dollars in our investment. That's portfolio. fantastic. And then we have various savings accounts. Um, and now, again, that comes from contributions uh, of about 35000 So, you know, again, you know, we have enough to, to weather this storm. And BFA, I mean, that's their job, you know, to, to look at this. We have an investment advisor. Um, and, you know, so it was very clear that, you know, we're not in a panic situation. However, if we're in this same situation come the next mid-year meeting, you know, then we've got to, you know, look at ways to cut the budget. We operate on a very lean system within the administrative office, but, you know, it's clear that the highest, you know, line items in the budget is salary and fringe benefits. So, you know, right now we're just, um, you know, focusing our efforts of, you know, right now shifting from an in-person to this virtual complimentary half-day annual meeting on August the 7th. And then the board has approved having a hybrid arm to the 2021 annual meeting. And what that means is that each of our 23 divisions will have the opportunity to have one virtual session. And then there will be five sessions that the program committee can um, organize virtually. And so that has been approved because, you know, we may be in a situation where we have to cancel the physical meeting in 2021. Can I uh, uh, interject here? You said for this year, we've got 128,000 deficit. What about next year projected? Do we have those figures? Okay, give me just one second, Rodney. For 2021, we're projecting a deficit of $271,247. Then, by the way, then I would suggest we are in a crisis mode. Uh, that's uh, over three hundred thousand uh, dollars deficit over the next two years. Uh, by the way, next year's deficit is twice what this year's deficit is. If that's rejected to the third year, then that might even be more. Um, uh, I think that we need to talk about not only membership but also uh, uh, alternative streams of revenue. Uh, let me put something else on the table. Uh, we have all of these regional um, uh, associations. Might I suggest that Triple SP could partner with the regional associations and, and essentially piggyback on them and do many conferences at regionals uh, where people can join and become uh, a full of uh, uh, halftime members with, with some kind of tack on or whatever their regional membership is. Uh, and by the way, we can do virtual conferences in those sites and it doesn't cost us additional money, uh, but it will bring us additional money. So again, we've got what, five or six uh, regions uh, uh, associations, if we had a regional triple SP uh, that met virtually uh, five times a year, uh, again, it wouldn't cost us any additional money, uh, but we can do it virtually. Actually, virtually is very expensive. For next year, we... Virtually? Yeah. Virtually? Yes. Yeah. Why is it expensive? Because you've got to have a platform in place. We're able to do it inexpensive. We budgeted $5,000 for the half day only because it is a limited, you know, with the presidential address, the business meeting, the awards recognition, and then the uh, pandemic plenary, we're able, we will just post those on our website and you can only access the Zoom hyperlink if you are a 2020 plus member. Let me, let me suggest that we want to investigate partnerships with people like Sage Publishing uh, that has these kinds of platforms uh, and they provide the platform to us uh, for some of our virtual meetings uh, and this offsets some of our cost. Again, uh, we cannot, there's no way the hell we can, we can go into a third year uh, with this increase in deficit. Uh, and, and if it keeps at the same pace, uh, we're, we'll be out of business year three. 
Well, we have seen that our investment um, in looking at just the account balance from May to June, you know, they have increased. You know, now that is an unrealized paper gain. Um, but we, the board has already had serious conversations and has approved, you know, the virtual component for 2021. We're currently working with our programmer because our online session management system has to be updated, reprogrammed, you know, to accommodate this hybrid arm. And all that costs money. And then we have um, did extensive research into, you know, the different platforms uh, that are available and, you know, to, to go just to have um, the 28 virtual sessions, we've got budgeted uh, $28,000 for the virtual in-person hybrid conference expenses. Because that is additional work outside the scope of our position. So that will entail our IT specialist who works part-time to work full-time for up to four months. Or, again, uh, we partner with somebody like Sage or other publishers, and we use their resources, their IT persons to do this, and it does not cost us. That's what I'm pushing. Uh, again, these uh, this keeps coming out of our pocket, all right? And at some point, we run out of pockets. Let me let me just ask a, a question. I I thought the idea of going more virtual, Rodney was suggesting, was was really a, a good idea that we we needed to be creative about. Not I, I um, right now. I'm chair of the history of sociology section for ASA, and we are having in, in their virtual engagement. We are having some sessions, and I thought that they would be providing the the Zoom. They're not. It's entirely up uh, to the individual members uh, and, and, and they're leaving it just to the sections to do it. Now, I'm, I'm just wondering, a lot of people will have, either through their institutions, sometimes access to uh, WebEx or Zoom. And so, would I, Michelle, would that help if, uh, if part of uh, division management, when you became an officer in the division, you would understand that you'd have to find somebody in the division who could host, uh, let's let's say, the division meeting. It's in other very words, expensive for a Zoom license, and so when we reached out to all of our committee chairs uh -huh. and our division chairs for those who didn't have a Zoom Pro account, like Jean Pierre yeah. worked with Rachel um, to where we could have a meeting longer than 40 minutes today. Yeah. And I mean, it, I mean, you're talking less than $20 for a Zoom license for one month. And so we have, to this point, we have provided four Zoom licenses. Uh, I mean, several committees have canceled, you know, um, um, their meetings. Um, it's the Zoom license is just a fraction of what the costs are. It's it's that platform that you have to use, um, you know, to where all the Zoom links are embedded, to where um, it's completely separate than the online session management system that we currently have. They have to be able to communicate together, and so that's where the additional programming comes into place, and um, you know then. A lot of the staff time, like right now, we we encourage those that will be participating to do a pre-recorded. Well, a lot of people don't have any experience with that, and so they're opting for the live option. But Rachel's working with President Heather Domage to get her presentation pre-recorded. So I mean, there's I mean, it's it's an incredible amount of time, even for this small half-day yeah. you know, virtual conference but the board feels that this is the direction the society has to go. I mean, for, you know, to see this would also give the, because one of the requirements is if you plan or will be attending the in-person meeting, you cannot participate in the virtual because what we are wanting to do is allow those members that can't attend you know, whether if it's, you know, they're in a foreign country or a lot of universities have 
cut, yeah. you know, reduced or eliminated travel funds. Yeah. So this would allow those members, you know, to participate. And then those that still plan to attend, you know, can go the traditional route of the person conference. By the way, my hey. university has canceled all uh, travel period uh, for this coming yeah. year. Uh, because yeah. of fiscal uh, uh, shortfalls, okay? Uh, so, so I mean, and, and that's across the state of Ohio, okay? So I would suspect that next summer, we're gonna find ourselves in, in a similar situation where many people won't be able to go because I don't think we're gonna be through this COVID thing by then. I think, I think those projections are, are absolutely right. But I think there is, I think there may be a silver lining for us in this, in that for a lot of people, uh, the annual meeting is a big event and yet it's, it's expensive. And not to have that expense may actually, especially because the Zoom can work ex really well. Um, I was looking over some of the comments that were made about the annual meeting. And I, I was trying to look for things that would sort of be with that we could say are action items and be within our control. And um, I noticed that one of the comments that seemed to run fairly consistently over the three years of surveys that we had from the annual meeting was people were not satisfied with the level of the presentations. Now their, their satisfaction was for different, re you know, a range of reasons, but not, not a whole universe of reasons. But the Zoom can give you, I know I, I always dread technology because I believe if anything can go wrong, it will with it. But if the technology is working, this is a good way uh, uh, to have a meeting. You can see the people that you're, you're speaking with. Uh, people are pretty respectful about time because they can look and see at once if somebody else wants to speak and kind of uh, pace themselves. I think we could do some things that would provide a really good meeting and not having to think about the expense of the annual meeting might make it more possible for people to uh, uh, renew, to take on the membership, even to pay a slightly higher membership, knowing that that, that membership was really going to cover a lot of things uh, for them. I, and, don't know, I don't know if that's any good or not. As well. Yes, it is. And, and let me add to that that the, the savings on the memberships uh, uh, from the member's perspective of yes. not having to pay hotel, not have to pay per diem, uh, travel, travel, so forth yeah. and so on. Uh, uh, let's say that, that a, third of, a, nor, nor, a third of that, okay, uh, is, is, is added to the cost of the platform for the association. So this $28,000, all of a sudden it's not there mainly because i'm not paying a hotel fee that's by the way another thousand two thousand dollars going to san francisco new york so forth and so on for three to five days Kathleen? yeah um Kathleen? Am, am i can you hear me yeah okay the meetings are for me i've been going for at least 20 years as a graduate student and now as an adjunct faculty member it is the premier time of my year. I love our meetings. We have so much fun. What seems to happen at the conference, because I've counted the rooms, is on Saturday when the ASA starts, everybody runs over to the ASA. So I would argue that the biggest problem we have is keeping our meetings going on the day that the ASA opens. Does everybody kind of, have you seen that? Am I, but the meetings no. are bad. You have not seen that. Well, it is the same. No, no, that's, that's really there in the data. When people would say, why didn't you attend more sessions on the surveys? Yeah. It was, they had to be at an ASA meeting. Right, right. So, and, 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 uh, and the second thing I want to address is that a lot of our meetings are our graduate students and those are our new members and members that hopefully will be sustaining members at some point. Do you know what I mean? So um, I don't know. I think, I think this is nice to have see you all here, but I think having our meetings in a physical space is, is really good. And I think that our hotel fees, am I wrong, Michelle? Don't they pay for um, the meeting conference rooms? Right, and we have negotiated hotel contracts through 2023. And so during that, you know, if we don't 
meet certain room pickup amounts, the society will be penalized. And we have certain uh, food and beverage minimums that are included in the hotel contract. So as long as our room pickup reaches, you know, the percentage, and in some cases it's usually, they will allow a 20% drop in attrition before meeting room rental is charged. In addition, there's all these concession items that is built into the contract that are subject to our room pickup. So, uh, but yes, to answer your question, you know, we have contracts signed through 2023. Hector and I typically would travel this fall to do a site visit for 2024, but due to COVID, um, and not only that, just one reason why when BFA was projecting annual meeting revenue for 2021, we are being very conservative. And I, I do need to preface that BFA tends to be very conservative in their projections because we can't assume that 2021, we're going to have the same level of meeting attendance that we had in 2019, which was 1,006 attendees. Right. You know, because of all the reasons that you have stated, you know, we do feel that, you know, attendance may drop. On the flip side of that, if that occurs, then, you know, the society will be invoiced for the difference. Might I, again, suggest that we think in terms of two tracks. Uh, one, yes, we've got the on-ground meeting, so forth and so on, since we're talking about membership, increasing uh, uh, revenue streams, that, that we triple our efforts to also uh, 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 add this virtual platform that, that we really want to get just as many people attending virtually that are attending face-to-face, uh, -face, okay? Uh, if, we, if we actually can double our numbers, uh, then that will hit us nicely in terms of this revenue stream. If I may interject here with a comment, um, um, I want to piggyback on what Catherine was saying about the importance of the meetings and um, it is a good solution, but I think it's a temporary solution to go the route of virtual meetings. The one thing that we are missing, uh, certainly was missing this this summer, is co-presence and its significance for social capital. I mean, we go to the meetings to basically network and you can network best if there is co-presence. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, anyway, um, I just hope that we will not adopt this down the line as the only option, <laughs> but um, a temporary solution, yes, probably, that might be the way to go. Well, and, and keep in mind, the board has only approved 28 virtual sessions. Right. So, you know, then because all divisions will have up to 10 total sessions for the in-person. That format and policy has not changed. It's just that, you know, we'll have this hybrid arm, you know, because that is one reason why it was, it would have been very difficult if not impossible to go from an in-person to a virtual. I know ASA has done it, you know, AAG, LSA, you know, they have, you know, they've already held their virtual conferences. And they Sorry. So, you know, we'll just have to wait and see, you know, the feedback that we hear from, you know, ASA, because I know, you know, as Jill pointed out, you know, they aren't pro providing and they're putting a lot of the burden on the session organizer. By the way, I think we need to really monitor this COVID thing, um, um, vaccine, so forth and so on. Uh, I think that needs to be part of upfront our planning. Uh, if there is no vaccine come January, February, uh, I think we can plan on not having a, a live meeting. Okay. Uh, and I think, I think we need, to, we need to, it's just like the universities are having the very same conversation right now mm -hmm. about, about, you know, are we going to be face to face? Are we going to be hybrid? Are we going to be virtual? Okay. Uh, and most, most universities right now are doing about 40% hybrid 
which means they're doing both virtual and online. They're only doing about 30% face-to-face and they're doing 30% that are all online. I think that's a model that we as an organization might have to think about going forward too. I I really want to second that. I I think that's a, I think it's a good analogy. And I think it's, I think it is the way that that we need to go for a while till things kind of uh, shake down. But I I do want to say again, I'm I'm not quite clear yet on, on, and and this is just, I I know my, my ignorance on the technology, but I don't quite understand what the drawback is to having each division uh, take responsibility for running, for instance, let's just say it's business meeting. I'm just trying to keep this simple. That the division, somebody in the division will have a, a, a Zoom or a WebEx account and will agree to host it. And, and that would not be a cost to anybody. Can I just ask, uh, I'm not clear why that wouldn't work. Well, but, I mean, that's what we're currently doing. You know, of all the divisions, yeah, you know, we've sent email, all the committee chairs, only four people have contacted us and said, you know, I don't have access to a Zoom Pro account. Okay. So only four out of all of those that have scheduled. So, so it, it can work that way. It, we'll it, see it, how many actually hold a meeting. You know, uh, several committees have canceled their meetings. A lot, though, of our travel award committees they, you know, once the work is done, there's really no need for them to meet. And so right. a lot of them, you know, don't meet at the in-person meeting. That's right. And, and then, you know, due to moving to the Zoom uh, format, you know, some of the committees that normally meet in person have opted not to, to hold a Zoom meeting. So, you know, we'll... Uh, and I, on, on the let me, of let Zoom, me piggyback I, on what Jill is saying. Uh, uh, just like an editor of our journal, uh, they go to their university and get some kind of dispensation for mm-hmm. the journal. I'm suggesting that when people become section uh, 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 heads, uh, they, that they go to their university and get a dispensation for, by the way, my university, I, well, I, I need a WebEx account. Uh, uh, so that we can use that for, by the way, uh, meetings, uh, but also to host uh, that those segments of our conference, okay? And, and by the way, uh, uh, that would not go on Triple SP. It would come out of the university, and that would be their contribution to my being the section leader. I'm just throwing it out and, and uh, what, what Jill is saying. I, I think that's a good idea, and I think we, I don't want to lose the, the point that Rodney started with about trying to do some things using the regionals. And I also think uh, thinking about how we coordinate with other associations. I think Kathleen's point was excellent and it is really borne out in the data. One problem at the meetings is we do lose people to the fact that we've overlapped with ASA. If we, now obviously there are good reasons for doing that, but if, yeah. if we were doing virtual, we would not have the same pressure to coordinate with ASA and we might see our att- attendance, I think we could see our attendance increase uh, and, and our membership increase off of virtual rather, rather than go down. I just know that of various committees that I belong to right now, civic and otherwise, uh, and frankly, I thought, good, I'll have some time off because <laughs> they won't meet. We are meeting virtually and the attendance is up. I mean, uh, because everybody's stuck at home, I guess, and doesn't have anything else to do. But I think the virtual platforms, and I am not a, t- a tech person at all, but I think these platforms are working really well and that we should try to seize them. And a way we could seize them is to get a volunteer, make a list of the other of the regional associations, try to maybe coordinate with SWS, which does both a, a, a winter and a, a summer meeting, and see if there's a way that we could at least have I, I just know SWS, but at SWS, we could have one one session there where we just talked about, as a member organization, Triple SP, we can talk about the new gender division. That would be, be a, a winning item. And we may pick up a few members that way. So if we could get a, if the membership committee, I, I'm not quite sure how our recommendations work, but if the membership committee got a couple of volunteers from each, or, or two or three, it'd be wonderful, you know, from each regional, 
who would take responsible for ability for being a triple SP presence at the regional, just telling them about what we're doing, what our membership possibilities are. Um, I think, you know, we'll pick up some, if we pick up some new members anywhere, we have to believe that if, if we get five new members, those people could turn into seven new members because a couple of them will tell friends that this is a really good organization. Well, that's contingent on the uh, potential venues with which, with which we partner with, right? I mean, they may decide yeah. not to partner with us for prop, uh, um, <laughs> pro pro proprietary reasons, you know? I mean, who knows? Uh, yeah. It, it's dependent on them, obviously. But, you know, I, I, I would imagine that we wouldn't like it if we were to be asked by other conference venues to see if to see if they could sort of use our space to promote their <laughs> why not why not i don't why think not? no no I i'm just telling you like i don't that. think that i mean i mean important. why not i i yeah. think i i think that again we're in a whole new space and a whole new world mm -hmm. OK, uh, we're not the only ones that 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 are facing these these massive shortfalls in terms of uh, finances. OK, and I'm willing to bet that one uh, that if we look at the data, a third of our members are members because they get to present a paper. OK, mm -hmm. and if we give them an opportunity to present a paper on multiple uh, uh, levels, uh, then that that helps us. And by the way, us partnering with Pacific or, or, or the Southerns uh, uh, act, and we've got members in our organizations that are key members of these organizations. OK, yeah, if we're right. talking about yeah. partnership that that enhances them as well as ourselves. That's right. And I will have to discuss with, with with the leaders of the various conference venues I mean, oh obviously well but i mean there's a there's a you know a system for putting in a, a program proposal but i want to go back to rodney's point that at least a third maybe more of our members are members to present a a a, a uh, paper and people come to the annual meeting to enjoy the workshops or the, the panel presentations and yet when you read through you also see that people are not overall the people who take the time to fill out the survey are overall, they're wonderfully satisfied with the online program, <laughs> uh, but they're not particularly satisfied with what's happening in the sessions. We can make the sessions better by arranging, uh, by doing some of it virtual. I think if people knew that it was gonna be a virtual session and it was gonna be recorded, and they were not just having a throwaway for this little group of you know two or three people they managed together as an audience that day, but it's going to go online. It would have the same effect that I find in my classes when the students are giving an oral report in front of other students, suddenly they become a hundred times more professional than they are in any of their dealings with me. They really care about looking okay in front of their fellow students. If you knew you were presenting and the pre presentation was going to be recorded and somebody, you know, could, uh, that it would be looked at again and again, I think we would improve the quality of the presentations that we're getting. Hmm. Well, I mean, I think in principle, this idea of like having a collective approach to the situation in which we find ourselves in is a good one. Things will have to be iron out though, I think. I, don't know. I, I wanted just to say, uh, I'm not kind of devil's advocate just a little bit here on the money side of things. Um, with universities budgets being slashed, how many memberships are they going to want to join? Um, if they're doing virtual presentations, does that mean the university is going to slash their travel budget so they don't have to attend the meeting? Well, you don't have to. We don't need to give you any money. Um, That's a good point. So I just I'm I'm wondering how much we're creating a new problem trying to solve this problem. Um, I, I was kind of reading through some of the niche. How to, how to build your membership stuff that someone sent out. And um, I, I keep thinking about blogs and uh, podcasts and 
um, is, would there be a way that we could create something more dynamic that's, you have to be a member, or if you're not a member, maybe it costs you five bucks, but then, you know, we can do a, a podcast with maybe this sociologist just came out with this book, let's do an interview, you know, some really timely stuff. It would be work on our parts to do, but possibly another revenue source that isn't going to affect how universities treat us in our memberships and I, I don't know I'm just trying to think of alternative sources too not that I, I want to say there's anything wrong with what you're saying it's just I worry about the money aspect and how universities will treat us if we go virtual with our meetings yeah. and and again I'm I'm arguing not either or I'm arguing and and more okay I'm arguing that there's a whole range of faculty that don't have travel budgets, okay? A whole range of VAPs that don't have travel budgets that, that this would be very important to because it gives them a low cost platform uh, where mm -hmm. they can, they can uh, uh, add to their vita. I'm talking about graduate students that don't have travel budgets. By the way, a third of our memberships are, 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 are graduate students, okay? I'm talking about undergraduate students, okay? Uh, that, that could present, okay, uh, in these virtual sessions, okay? That, that would, again, adding to these virtual streams, all right? I'm talking about a lot of our senior members uh, who are retired, uh, who, 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 who have stopped coming to meetings, all right? Again, a good quarter of our membership are retired. Okay, uh, and 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 attending meetings is 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 coming out of their own pockets. All right, and on fixed incomes, uh, they're not coming. Okay, so so so, and I, I'll give you a case in point. Judith Blau is is such an individual uh, who oh. you somebody said, yeah, you know, Judith. Judith would love to attend, but Judith yeah. Judith's on a fixed income. All right, yeah. but she would attend virtually. Okay, Me. and there's a whole bunch of our our colleagues. All right, and again, a, a virtual platform fee that would be radically different than those that need to face to face and have the resources for face to face. Okay, okay? so again, I'm not talking about either or. I'm talking about an additional mm -hmm. process and stream of of, of 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 products that we can add. And I love your idea about blogs. I think we can do again. It's not either or. We need to be doing all of these things. I want to say, I really like Aaron's idea about blogs also, and that, you know, if we could do, if we could do something that also, um, in terms of appealing to a larger public, made us, um, made us more current. And by current, what I mean is we now compete, all of anybody in social science does with a 24-hour news cycle, so that uh, uh, by the time we get our research done, the world has moved on to another problem. Um, but if we if we could run some blogs, if we could say uh, uh, the Society for Social Problems uh, has some solutions, and get people to blog on solutions, if it's just a, a best practices kind of thing or something that's been tried someplace and how well it's worked, uh, and that you could you could get that, we could build I think some really uh, uh, successful blogs. I think that is a terrific idea. And your idea about if you're a member, you know, it's, it's free, but if you're not a member, then, you know, uh, you know it's five, ten dollars, whatever, uh, in, in order to get uh, 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 to, to read the material. So I think it, I think it's a good time to be experimental. I think what, uh, uh, that it, uh, you know, it, it is a new day, a day, as Rodney said. And uh, I think that's a I think that's really a creative idea. We, we, and and, and, and by the way, let's, let, let, me, let me put something else here. We need to get the hell out of our ivory towers and, and get into the communities, okay? If, 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 the, if, if the shit that we are dealing with is only listened to by ourselves, then mm -hmm. it's a waste of effort, a waste of time, so forth and so on, okay? Uh, uh, I, I like psychology now. Okay. Uh, what about uh, SSSP now? Okay. Uh, yeah. Or sociology now? Okay. Again, and the idea, Aaron, uh, is that this is something current. Uh, Black Lives Matter right now. Okay. Uh, and we have a team of scholars that can issue out position papers on a 24-hour cycle. 
Okay, yes. uh, and 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 so press and so forth and so on that that are looking for a oh, wow here here we've already have 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 a position paper on this from recognized scholars by the way on police brutality on 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 crime on on uh, greater uh, prison pipeline uh, on drugs you name it okay on on me too all right and 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 again having these things coming out on a regular basis. And again, it doesn't cost us anything, all right, to do this. We all have the websites, okay, setting this up. Uh, 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 and it adds value to what we're doing. Michael wanted to say something? Oh, the idea that I had a... Okay. Oh. You go, go on. <laughs> One of the ideas that I had in mind is workshops throughout the year as well, uh, using oh, that's um, a good idea. Yeah. tapping the knowledge, tapping the expertise of our membership. Yeah, that's a good one, I think. Okay, and I think the, the same thing, my, my opinion is kind of similar to Aaron's, you know, in the current context, of pandemic, even after, even we can suppose, as some experts uh, predicted, that probably the pandemic will go over by the summer of 2021. But you know, psychologically, most people would have that fear to travel, you know, to live in hotel and any other things. And uh, I would just suggest, you know, we are working here to have this meeting to come with some strategic move to increase our membership to boost the vitality of this professional organization so why we go to attend the conference physically we not just because we wanted to present our paper we want our paper to be heard by the professional audience. We wanted to boost our professional growth. We wanted to create some kind of network to develop us professionally, you know, to help us to have better work in research and teaching. We can use online platforms to regularly host some uh, sessions for our new members graduate students, let them know how to be well prepared for future labor market and for junior faculty, you know, talk about uh, let those experienced senior members uh, have some mentoring session, let them know how to be, you know, how to have a better career research and in teaching and any other things, even as Rodden said, integration with community. So we can do a lot of things, not physically. We can meet regularly online, not just to Zoom. And we just try, you know, to use available resources with yeah. the budget in mind. We can still do a lot of things. And uh, this is another very good way for us to attract new members. You know, a lot of professional organizations like ASA, they have their uh, job banks and they have, uh, they're working with uh, other research agencies to have those uh, virtual sessions to talk about, you know, how to prepare a very strong research proposal, get your research funded. We can do a lot of things. And some of those, you know, like uh, most of things ASA now is doing, we, uh, our SSSP actually does not do those. So we can do those things ASA is now doing, and we can also develop some new ways to attract more students. Let, to join let, our organization and more faculty member. Yeah, we can do a lot. Mm -hmm. I would suggest to try to use online platform. Okay. Let yeah. me let me for add different one. sessions. Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. It's fine. No, it isn't.
Okay. Look, let me let me talk about and I'm gonna shut up. No, I'm not. Let me add one more uh uh idea to the table. We got all of these scholars. We say that we we study social problems, okay? Uh, 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 why can't we bring some of these scholars together to go after grants, by the way, to do workshops mm -hmm. at universities or at community institutions? Uh, why can't we do a police bias training, okay? Uh, uh, through, through a virtual platform, we bring in a group of scholars. Why can't we advise school boards, okay? Why can't we come up with a whole bunch of teams of experts, okay, that we can market ourselves, okay, uh, uh, through this organization to, to help facilitate communities, community organizations, institutions, corporate boards, so forth and so on, okay, and use the SSP platform, okay, uh, where SSP takes 40% off the top, okay, uh, 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 in this revenue stream, okay? Uh, uh, just like universities charge this, what, 65% or whatever overhead, Triple SP can do a similar kind of thing. And, and people use their relationship with SSSP uh, at, for this networking to go after these grants, so forth and so on, and it comes out of the auspices of Triple SP. If I may piggyback. Uh, what Erin was saying, you mentioned something about um, authors talking about their work, their books. I would say this, I just, I just had a meeting with the um, editorial committee for uh, social problems and we got a chance to listen to um, Oxford University Press and the whole marketing strategy. And I will say that um, they are using social media to the nth degree. And one of the things that they're doing is basically having, I, I can't remember the term that they use, but it's kind of like a blurb of things. Like they basically have an author, you know, talk on the web for like 10 minutes about their recent book. And that's how it is that they promote the authors of the journal. Um, so um, there's something to what you all are saying. We, you know, I think that, dealing with how to actually implement it, we will need to get a bunch of other people on board for this, uh, needless mm -hmm. to say. Um, but yeah, I mean, a lot of the things that you're saying, university presses are doing already because they're in the business of selling stuff, which is to say they're in the business of basically getting customers. Uh, in, our, in, our, in, in our case, it will not be customers, it will be members, okay? Um, so social media, I mean, Twitter, they were talking about Twitter. How is it that Twitter is a significant tool? I, I mean, I, I don't know Twitter. I, I don't even know what Twitter is. <laughs> I mean, except to recognize the name, but they're using Twitter. They're using all these author, um, you know, venues um, on, online. Uh, they, I have to look at the documents, but they're using a lot of stuff that they could potentially um, use uh, okay, I gotta go. Someone's knocking on my door. <laughs> you continue. <laughs> yeah, can I add in there one thing that I was thinking too is I am going to be doing um, an essay on institutional racism and COVID 19 for city and community. It's an ASA flagship journal. And it's a 3,000 word essay. There's gonna be five of them. And the editor keeps doing these symposiums where they're not peer-reviewed articles, it's a very topical something that's popping up. And so we're gonna, we're gonna write something. I got two of my students to help me with this. So they'll get a little publication out of it. And it's relevant, it's current. And I was thinking, could that be something we, I like this idea of this symposium where you get a publication, um, it's not a peer-reviewed publication by any means, but it could be a way to make Triple SP a little more relevant to the mid-career person who needs to get their a publication in social problems, which is a high prestige and very difficult journal to get published in, if they had the occasional symposium that could then become some sort of blog or thing that they could do a panel on it as well. I mean, I think you're taking advantage of multiple 
um, it just it's, it's ways to make it relevant to um, mid-career people's careers as well as um, showing how relevant we are to the current social problems of the day um, so some way to, to combine things that are important for our careers at least those in academia but the other thing I was thinking is our faculty has learned from our graduate students just how out of it we are you know, <laughs> now and they have been teaching us a lot about activism now today and how that's operating and we're having these weekly meetings where they're teaching us what's going on in their worlds and you know some workshops like to train that. faculty yeah. might be another way you know how is activism out there operating today how can we be part of it how can we learn from it I, to me these are, are ways we could become more relevant to our students and more relevant just in general to society. By the way, I the, say fact that that is... the fact that there was no, uh, until late, comment about Black Lives Matter, uh, the fact that um, uh, sociology in general tends to discover things after they have died, uh, uh, and then we look retroactively at them. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact that we do no prediction uh, the fact that we try not to solve any problems, even though we are the Society for the Study of Social Problems, uh, we, 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 we rarely have a Society for the Study of Social Solutions. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that we could come up with a whole platform uh, that, that lists our social solutions, all right, that are time honored, that are best practices, that are demonstrated to actually work, okay? Uh, uh, again, uh, uh, having a platform where we talk and listen to young people. Okay, again, I got I got to ask one more question. What is our value? Okay, what 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 what? Why do we exist? Okay, uh, Morris Janowitz, uh, uh, before he died, was going to work on a a new paper. That paper was gonna, book was going to be uh, sociology for what purpose? Okay, uh, uh, what is the functional you know, what do we do, okay, and why do we do it, okay, if it's all navel-gazing, if it's all about careerism, uh, if it's all about me getting one more publication so that I can get a raise this year, I'm sorry, then we are a useless organization, okay, and we are a useless discipline, okay, uh, if we're not embedded in the community and doing some things that are making some differences, then why the hell do we exist? I, uh, I hate, I mean, fantastic question, and it's connected to the two links that uh, Hector basically mm -hmm. called to our attention. Value is a significant way through which you can actually promote your organizational entity. So that's a very good point. But I need to remind you that we basically end at 4.30, and we have yet to go through the <laughs> uh, full agenda. Um, Hector has to report. Uh, and then, of course, I think that we have taken care of number seven because all of the stuff that we have been arguing about or talking about, um, I think pretty much has been covered in the last hour and a half. Uh, but we, need, we still need to have, we still need to um, hear uh, Hector present um, his report. And then, of course, unfinished business, new business. And then, of course, lastly, adjourn. I'm sorry to uh, be a party pooper. Um, <laughs> But uh, we must keep to agenda because I think that we're going to lose the signal, no? No, you, you can go over. It's just other oh. people's schedules. Okay. I think the one thing I, I want to make the committee aware, if you're not already, that um, the agenda for social justice, you know, that's published through Policy Press every mm -hmm. four years will be coming out. And then also we are doing two special issues with them. Um, on the pandemic and so one of them has already gone to, to press I believe um, so you know those publications will be coming out you know that but I'm um, going back to a lot of these ideas which are wonderful ideas how are they implemented I know we're brainstorming yeah. but like who writes the blog I mean who who's responsible for the symposium I mean I can't even get a social media blurb per month from the membership and outreach committee. You know, everybody is extremely busy. And I mean, so 
who's going to spearhead these ideas and you know make them become realizations? I guess Presumably the fine. board of directors could basically determine a course of action for us. I mean, yes, we're in the process of sort of like um, exploring the various ideas that could potentially help us get out of the hole that we find ourselves in. Although, you know, to be quite correct, we're not in a hole yet, but we will be in a hole in three years, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, I mean, at one point, I don't know if we need to meet with the board or if the board will respond to what we're saying. And, and actually, I have the task of having to come up with, you know, action items. And I'm, and I'm trying to figure out how to condense them <laughs> into maybe 10 or five. And uh, I might have to send you an email with uh, your, your feedback for you to give me your feedback on what I have come up with because uh, so many things have been <laughs> discussed. And the purpose of the meeting was to come up with action items, right? Right. So. Let, me, let me respond to Michelle for a minute. Um, uh, let me just talk about blogs for, for a second, okay? Uh, if we had a platform, we just invited uh, the Triple SP membership to submit blogs. Uh, 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 the, the, the people like, we are always writing. We're writing every damn day. Um, um, uh, and and, and uh, the fact that we're doing two on COVID is nice, but the fact that we have yet to do anything on Black Lives Matter, uh, which is a major uh, uh, issue in this country, points to the fact that we are not relevant uh, to a, a substantial portion of this country. We don't have an issue statement? The triple SP doesn't have an issue statement? On Black Lives Matter? I've yet to see one. Oh. We do, we, do. we have a statement. It's on our website. Oh, it's on the website, <laughs> which means that if you didn't go to the website, you didn't see it. Uh, Best Buy sent me one directly. <laughs> we sent something out to the membership, didn't we, Michelle? I mean, I thought we did. Let me check. Yes, I was going to say that if, um, the ASA uh, had a statement. I'm sure we did as well. And I don't recall the ASA basically uh, making it available other than their website either, but maybe we should be different. I don't know. No, I thought we had notified the, uh, the membership that uh, the statement. Um, I think it was part of another, I think it was... Um, something we sent out and I think there was something else that was coupled with, but in any event, if we have it, we have to send it out. Um, but I, I thought we had. You're correct. We, we've we included in and th uh, a total of three communications. Yeah, so we've sent it out. But not to the entire, mm -hmm. um, it went not to the entire membership. Okay. Something that we- That was my point. Yeah, but something we might think about doing, am I, am I yeah, uh, is when, if, if we might set up a communication channel, I mean, this is a small step, but it, it could work, where uh, a notice is sent out and, and we ask members to share it, to share it with their classes, to share it with their schools, to share it with their churches, whatever, whatever venue they have, uh, so that it, because so often I think, obviously we're, at this point, everybody's getting too many emails and everybody is, com is, is competing for people's attention time. But I think having this reserve, the category of, you know, share, means that in a sense, you as a triple SP member, and we might make this part of membership, that there are some obligations that go with being a triple SP member besides just um, paying your dues, that you are expected to participate in various ways. The blog uh, could be one of them. The, just the sharing of materials that we send out, but uh, so that when we get, you get an item that's a share, it means you, you really ought to pay attention to this and we're asking you to pass it on so, so it, doesn't just, uh, it doesn't just die. Also on Michelle's obviously very good point about uh, how these are gonna be implemented, it, it seems to me that we've, we've said several big things that could go someplace, but there's a need to, to put in place committees, it, it can't just be done overnight. We need to get some volunteers for committees who'd be willing 
to study this and, and come back in, the, in, in a few months with a plan that could be for, 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 for implementation. I think the, I think the, uh, the symposium idea uh, that Aaron was suggesting along with the blogs are, are really good things for us to think about. I think the various ways of going virtual, I think the outreach to form partnerships with other organizations is another, but I, I don't, there's no way we could come up with a, you know, I think we've got three good action items. Yeah, I, I mean, I got those three that you just mentioned. But yeah. There are more but, that maybe need to be distilled. And, yeah. And but, might, I, might I add that some of us have a substantial uh, virtual um, um, footprint. Uh, I've got a Facebook page, for example, that has at this point 21,000 um, um, uh, members oh. on it. Uh, many people within our organization have similar uh, networks. Uh, so rather than recreating the wheel, uh, if we if we just if we were, did a survey of our membership and their social uh, uh, footprints, media footprints, we may be we may be able to tap into those uh, for the purpose of uh, triple SVP. Okay, and and I would have no problems of uh, uh, posting things on my social media websites for triple sp it wouldn't cost anything particularly if we had some regular again blogs or news items so forth and so on that are in a timely way uh and by the way this gets us into uh, uh areas that we don't normally have access to okay uh, and, and again, I'm willing to bet that I'm not the only one that has social media footprints with 17, 20, 30,000 people. I don't. Hector, <laughs> hey, uh, you want to report? I, you know, it, it, I'm not sure at this point, given the conversation we've had since it's been so broad, whether there's anything else that you want to... To, to hear from me at this particular point or to continue this conversation. Um, you know, I mean, I, I made a couple of notes. I think the, uh, the ideas of using social media are much better. We did that with social problems. I think it's made a difference. I think we can do it more broadly as Rodney and others have said to, um, and a lot easier, particularly the last idea uh, that Rodney threw out. And that is to use uh, people's presence, right, that they have now, right, and to funnel things in that way. That won't require setting up a new structure, per se, though it has to be organized to some degree. That's still a question that hangs over our head. The, uh, as far as our relevance as an organization, it, it's interesting that, um, that, that Rodney brought that up, and I think others as well here, because uh, I, uh, for the COVID uh, issue that's coming out. There's actually two. One that focuses on the U.S., the other one more international. I was asked to write the afterword for, for one of them. And my afterword basically is on precisely that point. Uh, just to give you a quick example, every year we give $5,000 to a organization in the city that's doing social justice work. And then we move on to the next city. Uh, and it occurred to me, why don't, why isn't that the start of like uh, a new relationship, right? Where you maintain that presence, you stay in contact with that organization and then other organizations that work with that organization. And that's one way we can become uh, more relevant. There are other ideas like that out there, uh, even in the academy itself, right? In academia, the way we, uh, what we reward and what we don't reward, the kind of work that we do. There are a lot of students or a lot of people that would love to do uh, the kind of work we're talking about, but it's probably not gonna get them tenure at their particular institution, right? That culture has to change, but we as an organization can play a part in starting to make a change uh, because we have a presence in a lot of departments and that could be another way of doing that. But um, the, the other thing I should mention very quickly uh, is that when we were talking about virtual meetings, um, as Michelle said earlier, we have contracts through, what is it, 2022 or 23? Uh, 2023. Yeah, and that specifies, right, the, the number of rooms 
that we have to fill. And if we don't, right, then, so we can't simply, even if we decided, right, that these meetings should be half and half, half in person and half virtual, that presents a problem uh, for us unless we can renegotiate that contract, right, with the hotel. Um, so there are little things like that. They, I'm throwing that as an example. There are little things like that that really have to do more with transition. Yeah, with transition more than anything, right? Yeah. It's not that we can't move in that direction, but I think you should be aware of the fact that, that there's a transition that has to take place. Um, and, and then the other thing is bringing this together because there are a lot of ideas thrown out there. Uh, they have to be somehow sort of organized, compiled in a, in a way that can be dealt with, right? And particularly by the board, right? Because we have to take this to the board. Uh, so we have to do that as well. I think the fact that it's recorded and that we have minutes, right, that are being taken. Uh, and then on my end, I can work with it, uh, probably minutes off the recording, right? Uh, that uh, we can take that to the board uh, as well. And I can work on, you know, tightening it up in a sense, right, or packaging it, right, in a way that, you know, that, that kind of makes sense. Because right now they're just, there are all these really ideas Then now we have to sort of bring it together, right? And sort of, uh, and to take into consideration, um, you know, you know, pr problems, right? The, the, that it may present for us to, to go ahead and to initiate them, you know, and the issue that, you know, Michelle brought up is really an important one. And it comes from experience, right? Uh, over the years, we've seen a lot of great ideas, right? This is probably one of the best, discussions I've been a part of. Uh, but one of the hardest things really is to get people to do it. Uh, we have a hard time right now getting people to do, uh, you know, less ambitious things, right, uh, in the divisions, right? And we have very limited staff to do it. So that's the other, that's the other part. So, but we need to bring this together to talk about what we'd like to do, what the impediments are, how we can overcome them, and also to talk about the transition. I noticed Kathy has her. I just want to say uh, my ex-partner is a, a social media director for one of the large hospitals here in Philadelphia. And I'm certain that she that's the kind of person strategically, if you're going to have this idea of having blogs and, and TED Talks and all of that, any kind of social media, that you need somebody that has a little bit of expertise in putting mm -hmm. it together. And I think it would be, and let me just, Michelle will know, that this generally, because it would have an administrative piece, would probably end up on the shoulders of our, our administrative staff at some level. Because mm -hmm. in order to filter, you know, the social media, using social Facebook, for example. But I know somebody who's, who's, who does that. They might be willing to take a look at some of our ideas and get back to us. I mean, she's very good at what she gets paid a very good sum of money to be their social media director. And I think... She's very busy, but I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm certain that it is an administrative task that if we really wanted to implement it, we'd need somebody to give us some help with that, honestly. Well, see, that's Let really me. the conundrum, right? We have all these ideas, Thank and we'd me. like to be able to do that. It's going to take staff time, right? Yeah. If we don't get enough volunteers to do it at a time that we're running a deficit, right? Let it me. may mean at some point cutting staff. That's something that we that we may have to do, right? So that's why. So again, I'm not saying we can't do it, especially the social media part. To me, is I think is critical uh, for this organization, for any organization. But we need to sort of package it some way so it's manageable, so that we can work with it. But let this me, is the part. Let me jump in, Hector. Um, um, everything that we do, if we can tie it to what we need to do as professors. In, in academia or in the community that that augments our positions at those universities okay so yeah. so if we can demonstrate how it leads to publications in uh, 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 social problems for example okay we say you know what we're, well, here's a track to get into social problems. You start off as a blog, it moves to a uh, presentation, uh, it go, you know, you get reviewed, all right? Uh, and then, by the way, uh, after you've done this presentation and get reviewed, it's automatically submitted into Triple SP, and it's, it's at the top of the rung, okay, for that, okay? So if we set up a, a ladder, 
all right, into our publication. That's just one way to, to, to make this happen from blog to uh, publication using the resources that we already have and what our membership, one of the uh, key things our membership needs to have are publications. Thank you. And that's value added for participation, membership, and long-term commitment, okay? Okay, a two or three year process. May we return to the agenda? I have to actually go. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm building an online class that is due on Saturday and I have to go to a chiropractor and I'm about halfway done and it's mandatory I do it. So um, thank you very much everyone, it's great. If you want me to ask my friend who is a uh, media social media director on some of the ideas you have here, uh, I can ask her, she probably, she volunteers everywhere and would be probably willing to look at some of our ideas and see if she could come up with a little bit of a plan that she, you could then take to the board that would might be something of value to, I'm um, just suggesting. I know she'd do it if I asked her, in other words, if you'd <laughs> like. Um, I, I have good influence there. And I, you know, again, thank you so much, everyone. It's been a pleasure meeting thank all you. of you. And I thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, -bye. Bye Kathleen. Bye. Here. Um, so can we return to the agenda? As uh, Is there anything the, else you wanted me to report on that at this point? Well, I mean, it's, it, it, there was nothing specifically uh, noted on the agenda that you were going to report. Um, I don't know I guess. if there's anything I can add that hasn't come up in this conversation or that right. you have Right, seen. No, no, I mean, I think the next um, item on the, agenda, on the agenda is unfinished business. And then after that, <laughs> new business. Uh, so if you would permit me, I have, a, I have a question with respect to unfinished business <laughs> that mm -hmm. it actually is connected to our last meeting last year and that is connected to the, staff, the staffing issue. If you look at the um, minutes that I gave you, I was wondering about number four. Um, the uh, staffing changes, I, I guess we discussed that, right? I think the current. I don't have it in front of me, unfortunately. No, 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 I'm yeah. it up. Uh, the head of the sociology department at the time of negotiations did not agree to propose to propose staffing changes to the current agreement between the SSSP and UTK. He felt that UTK sociology was getting shortchanged. Consequently, it was decided that maintaining the current arrangement is the way to proceed. The proposed staffing changes will be revisited at a later time. So I guess that's what we discussed at the beginning of the of the meeting. Yeah, I, I made a reference to that at the beginning, right? Uh, we had hoped to replace the GRA position with a professional position, either full right. or part time, and then uh, the money that we normally gave to the department would be it would be increased somewhat. Uh, would then go for a TA or a graduate assistantship, which would benefit the student a hell of a lot more than being our GRA. I think students who are GRA really suffer for it. They would get a lot more out of being a teaching assistant or a graduate assistant. Uh, but they turned it down because they thought they were getting short change. I think they were short-sighted about it. So I think we have to revisit it and we can do it this coming so year. Basically, it's the same thing because the, yeah. the conclusion that we arrived at last summer, and I guess we are arriving at the same conclusion this summer. So I guess it's an ongoing thing, I guess. Yeah, but let, let me add something here, though, right? Uh, uh, but every, every, with the pandemic, <laughs> that may have changed too, right? I mean, at the time we were proposing this, we were doing well financially, right? right? right. We didn't have a pandemic. So now that may change. Uh, you know, I don't know if we would propose that again and in the same way. So I think we'd have to revisit that as an organization. Any other unfinished business? Michelle, uh, anyone else? <laughs> Just what I mentioned earlier that we need to identify um, a committee member for the upcoming site visit and the oh, from this committee. committee? And yes, I need one permanent organization, and it will need to be someone whose term is continuing. Ah, so I wouldn't qualify then, right? Because no. just, you, right. you rotate, you and Aaron rotate off. Right. Can I can I suggest uh, Professor Shin? E. Yes, you. When? Why? <laughs> Chama is in November. 
<laughs> no, as in, as in, you need to do a trip. <laughs> a trip. Uh, where are you at, by the way? Where Where are you at now? Uh, Virginia. No oh. folk. So this yeah, would be kind of. Yeah, Tennessee is the like kind of closer to Virginia. I can go. Yeah. yeah you can even drive from Virginia. <laughs> Yeah, it, 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 and it'll be warm weather. We don't. We, it won't even be summer. That's in the south. <laughs> well, we may be doing it virtually too, depending yeah. on how things are come spring. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I can. Okay. <laughs> well, then I guess we have taken care of unfinished business, and this raises the question: any new business <laughs> that we need to report on? Jill? Uh, I only have a concern. I'm wondering if there's any way that Triple SP, uh, and this would have to go, I know, through the board, but this is my access to this, uh, can join in in the, the lawsuit or, or partnering in any way with the lawsuit that's just been brought by uh, Harvard and MIT against this latest ICE action where they have said oh. that. They oh, were, yeah. That is a nightmare. And I think it we, is. Ought to, we ought to take a position on it. They are. I mean, they're just manufacturing another problem. It's, by, it's, by, by the way, by the way, uh, uh, in three days on a change.org petition, I've got like thirteen thousand uh, signatures. Uh, uh, we could we and it, it doesn't cost us anything. We could actually write up uh, uh, what's from Jigum, uh, put it on change, yeah. distribute it through our various social networks. All right, and then have that petition delivered. Uh, again, I myself, I got thirteen thousand uh, signatures uh, uh, in in three days. Okay. And you figure all the universities that are going to be directly impacted upon this. Uh, mine, for one, yes. where a third of our students come from international. Uh, all right. Oh yeah, we have that, we, uh, we do a lot of international students. Not that high, but um, is this something that we can uh, uh, ask the board to consider, Hector? Please. Yeah, could, uh, Joe, could you send me uh, the uh, that information on the Harvard and MIT? Yes, Just yes. Email I'll, to me and then yeah, can, I'll, I'll email you. Yeah. I can take it directly to the board. Okay, so thank can, you. If they're in agreement, we can move on it pretty quickly. Okay, well, thank, thank you, you very much. Appreciate that. And uh, and by the way, this is something that if we could move on it quickly, uh, I'm a member that I would donate money uh, that will go toward a legal fund. Uh, uh, <laughs> You know, and by the way, uh, through the change thing and through what's that fundme.com, yeah. uh, we could actually raise money for this on behalf of AAASP. Oh, that's good. that's good. Okay, and again, the same thing in three days, we raised over $5,000, uh, uh, 15,000, I mean, sorry, 13,000 signatures in three days. Okay, and it didn't cost us anything. Okay. Well, if there's nothing else, we can um, I motion to adjourn. Uh, do you want to announce who the new chair is? Or are you going to do that already? We did that already. Was, who uh, is that asshole? I will, <laughs> I, will, I will announce it again, Rodney. That uh, jerk. He's, he's even part of the memo. <laughs> I think he's an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Rodney is the new uh, chair of the uh, Permanent Organization and Strategic Planning Committee. I am rotating off of the committee, and I and this is my last year as the chair, my first and last year as the chair. <laughs> and needless to mm -hmm. say, I think that you you will be in good hands, <laughs> Rodney, uh, spearheading uh, the direction of this committee. JP, I would like to thank you for your diligence, for your hard yes. work, uh, for your. Uh, uh, you have been uh, a consummate professional, uh, constantly pushing us in the right di direction. Uh, you are a phenomenal person, and and the time that you've spent uh, to the to the uh, to this committee, but also the Triple SP, I really want to applaud you and say thank you thank for you. it. Appreciate that. Yes, and we're delighted to have him on the Editorial and Publications Committee. Hey, hey. this committee is starting there, so we are. In very capable hands. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, oh, I have to say, I hope to join again if you would allow me because I really like this group. As I was telling Michelle over email, Sometimes we're looking for somebody. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I don't, I, I, I guess I have to wait a little bit before I return to the, to the fold. 
Uh, yes, the uh, Committee on Committees has already, there were only two positions that needed to be filled on this committee and they've already been okay. appointed. So. I mean, I don't mind waiting, but I will probably make myself known um, to the Committee on Committees. Well, thank you so much. Uh, I'm going to try to come up with action items, you know, boom, boom, bulleted items here uh, in the next few days. Um, bear with me. I'm in the middle of like five different projects. <laughs> so, but I'll send this to you and I think I, I need to send a report to Michelle, right? By the 15th? Yes, I need that by July 15th, please. Right, and, and, yeah. and, and, and so I will try to do it uh, by Monday at the latest. And then um, you can please give me, my, give me your feedback um hopefully on the same day so that then i can basically wrap it up and then deliver it to michelle and i will be including you on this email correspondence michelle you are certainly welcome to give me your feedback as always which is very insightful uh, i'm gonna miss you all so uh i hope to see you soon face to face <laughs> hey <laughs> And, and as soon as I can get a uh, uh, meeting, uh, Zoom, recording. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, uh, I will be sending that, that to you because once we, once we um, disconnect, it will automatically uh, be saved to my computer. And all I have to do is send it to you. Oh, uh, uh, I hope you also save it on uh, to a cloud because sometimes these damn files become too large and you can't send them uh, oh. or you put them on uh, Google oh, Drive. Okay. You're testing. Uh, You're testing uh, you might have to upload it to Google Drive and then make that link available, but this okay. is going to be a huge I'll file. Work on it. I will work on it. <laughs> it's, it's love business, Jesus. Having, having done our, this a couple of times. Our prayers are with you, Jean Pierre. Our prayers are with you. And, you know, I, I guess I'm old. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, um, well, I guess uh, anyone seconds the motion to adjourn? I, I second. second. Thank you. It was wonderful to uh, meet you again. I'll Bye. be in contact soon. Bye, everybody. I'll Bye. be the same. Bye. 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 Bye.